what is up guys it is the blue bloods here and you know probably not breaking news now but last night extremely unexpected transfer out of jackson state in which coinus miller announces his transfer from the tiger from the tigers program this is his second transfer in his career as we all know he transferred away from auburn came to jackson state was an instant impact guy last season but now he's looking to finish his senior season elsewhere in college football and i think this was you know it, it was one that i don't think anybody saw coming i mean when you look at what that jackson state d-line was going to be coinus miller was going to be one of those guys that you thought was going to be a senior leader of that defense one of the top people on that d-line to replace people like antoine owens and james houston that are headed off to the nfl draft but instead He's going to try his, his, his he's going to take his talents elsewhere. And I've kind of put some feelers out there to some people I know. And I know that based on what I've got, some feedback I've gotten, that Miller is probably looking to finish his career at the FBS level, whether that be Power Five, Group of Five. I'm not so sure right now. This is still a pretty fresh transfer, but I would really find it hard pressed to believe that he is going to want to transfer. Um, within the FCS somewhere. So I'm expecting Miller to want be at an FBS program sometime for the 2022 season. Um, the journey to Jackson State, man, let's kind of go back and work our way backwards and to see how Coinus Miller got here. So a consensus four-star defensive tackle out of Jackson Olin High School in Birmingham was a top 120 overall player, a top 10 defensive tackle in the class of 2018, was a number three player out of the state of Alabama, was an Under Armour All-American selected to the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Game, was a highly recruited kid. I believe um, when you look at the offers he had, Oregon, Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee, most Power 5 programs had Miller as one of their priorities he committed to auburn over oregon over alabama over tennessee which all were programs that that were looked at as favorites for his talents coming out of high school but when he gets to auburn so he got to auburn i believe it was like my freshman year uh while i was there i remember coinus miller was a was one of Auburn's top priorities when you look at rodney garner the d-line coach for the tigers coinus miller was arguably the number one target for for that program that year but he never really found his role at Auburn he played 19 games over his first two seasons for the Tigers but he really found himself stuck in a loaded defensive line group I mean they had former top 10 pick Derek Brown at the defensive tackle spot uh Truesdale Tyrone Truesdale was really finding his role at that other defensive tackle spot Marlon Davidson a second round pick for the Falcons was out there at defensive end they still had big cat Bryant who ultimately finished his career at UCF so we we see that he really honestly didn't have a great opportunity to find his his spot at Auburn then head coach Gus Malzahn announces that Miller is no longer with the team it was September right before the 2020 season which was impacted by COVID was starting for the SEC and it was widely regarded with the Auburn media as a huge loss for a young Auburn D-line Derek Brown, Rodney Garner, a lot of people were speaking highly of the strides that Miller was making, and he announces his intent his intentions to transfer to Jackson State early of January 2021. Of course, had to sit out that spring season, but he but he found his role for the fall 2021 season. And when you look at the D line last year, Antoine Owens, James Houston, of course, were the faces of that defensive line. But I thought Miller was firmly in that second tier group of that defensive line. 20 total tackles, five for loss, one and a half sacks. He was top 10 in tackles for loss sacks on the team, top 12 in tackles at the defensive tackle spot, which is really tough to do. And I thought he was projected, like I said earlier, to be one of those senior leaders on the defensive line, especially when you look at the experience that Jackson State was losing with the James Houston, with an Antoine Owens, which all these guys had had tens and twenties of games started in their career. So what what this does for Jackson State, I feel like, is not one, it doesn't make them super weak at a defensive line position. I think they're loaded at the edge spot. When you look at Anals Gaddy, all the people they got, a, an Antonio Doyle from Texas A&M that they landed, they landed Jason, uh, I believe it's Mercier um, from FIU. They have, they have a lot of talent at the edge spot. They still have Katron Evans. I understand that at the defensive tackle spot, but 
what it does is just put pressure on people to develop quicker and be instant impact. And it ha they have a lot of younger guys. When I look at this defensive tackle spot, Devontae Davis is back. 24 tackles last year, nine and a half for loss, three sacks of forced fumble. He really statistically was probably the third best defensive lineman last year behind Owens and behind Houston. You still got Katron Evans, a tough four-star top 100 type player, 14 tackles, two for loss and one and a half sacks last year as he really didn't come on till later in the season. These two guys are going to be my pick to really step into that role. Davis really carved it out later in the season, but Katron Evans now, I feel like, has a lot of pressure to develop very quickly. I've heard he's looked great in camp this spring and everything, but we all know when it gets to the season, you're going to have to perform. So I really want to see if Katron Evans can take that next step in his development because he's a very similar prospect to what Coinus Miller was when he was entering Auburn out of high school. And then also... True Thompson, transfer from Florida State, has a very similar frame to Coinus. He's six foot 308, according to the measurements I found on 247. That's about how big Coinus was. Coinus was right at about that 300 mark. He was 6'1, I believe. But True Thompson, from what I heard, I talked to my Jackson State guy today, is dealing with a minor injury. He was looking good. I don't know how long he's out or what that injury consists of, but I heard True Thompson was hampered right now. But he's probably going to be a guy you look for in the fall to really add some depth to the defensive uh, tackle spot. But for me, looking at what Jack State can do moving forward, I expect the transfer portal to be buzzing after spring practices wrap up for a lot of these group of five and power five teams. Everyone knows playing times different, scheme fits. Some players are unhappy with unhappy with their situation. They'll graduate, and so that you get a lot of grad transfers. And I would expect, I think, what Jackson State is going to do is slow play this a little bit. I don't think they're going to rush to the portal and take a chance on a guy who might not be worth taking the chance on right now. When you look in the portal, I don't see a lot of instant impact guys at this position right now. But what I think they'll do is if a few guys decide to leave or look for more playing time, they're going to go for somebody that has at least 10, 15 games of experience. They need experience at the defensive tackle spot. I think the edge spot is loaded. They just need one of those uh, hard to move defensive tackles. They don't need they don't need anything else other than size in the middle. Somebody that's going to take up blockers and allow those athletic linebackers like Aubrey to go make plays and allow those defensive ends like Niles Gaddy and them to go get the quarterback. They need a run stopper. They need a they need a plug and play defensive tackle, and I expect them to get that. But I would imagine they're going to probably wait till the end of April, maybe even May or early June before making. I guess before making that move in my opinion. So I don't think Jack State's going to rush out and you're going to see someone commit next week or the week after, but just give it a few weeks, give it about a month, and I think Jack State's going to look to land probably one more defensive tackle. They didn't recruit that position very hard this, this year. I believe True Thompson was the only interior D lineman they actually brought in. And when you look at their edge guys, you, you might ask, can anyone move inside? I don't think Niles Gaddy or, or, or Mercier or even uh, Big Country from Florida State, I don't think they're that they don't have the weight to really be an every down run stopper defensive tackle. So I do think Jackson State needs to go get one more guy. They really got three guys that are, I think are going to make an impact in Katron Evans, True Thompson, and also Devontae Davis. But they need a, a one more guy because we all know with Jackson State's defensive line, they like to rotate guys. They like to rotate in, rotate out, and you're going to get fresh bodies in later in the game. And that's the key with D-Line, man. You want fresh bodies in the fourth quarter to go – Go get the quarterback and go make plays. So depth right now is a small concern at the D tackle spot. Maybe not as an overall D line because they are loaded at edge, but look for Jack State to go get out a D tackle. And for where Coinage can end up, it's still really early. But I think if you're looking at his history and where he's going to fit, he's from Birmingham. UAB is a really good school school in terms of the CUSA that they just won the championship not too long ago that program's really on the up and up the up and coming I guess roller coaster of what of what that was where they canceled the program brought it back and now they're back but 
they just got a new stadium. That's a program I look for in his hometown. Also, UCF, Central Florida with Gus Malzahn and that coaching staff that was with him at Auburn. That was the defensive staff and head coaching staff that recruited Miller out of high school. I would look for UCF as the other option. I don't see him going to another FCS program. I think he wants to finish his career at the FBS level, which is what some sources have told me. But I'm going to wait and see here. We'll see where he ends up. But UAB and UCF are two programs that I would look – very closely, very, very closely at because UCF has shown in that Gus Malzahn staff that they want to go get those former Auburn players. They brought Big Cat in for his last year. He had a giant year and might even find himself in the NFL draft this year. So look for Coinus Miller to look for those two schools. And any dark horses that I hear, I will update y'all. I just wanted to get this episode out. I'm rooting for Coinus, man. I really like him as a talent, but We'll see where he's going to end up. Jackson State, I'm excited to see who they go out and get at the defensive tackle spot to bring in some depth. But, guys, for right now on the Blue Bloods, we are out. Stay tuned for more updates.